Welcome everybody. It's great to see you. Um, I've lost count of how many this is in the series of co-housing and coronavirus web chats, but we are continuing to do them every Tuesday as long as they're needed. Um, I'm Karen Gimnig and I am the communications director of the Co-Housing Association of the United States. And Karen will wave at us, I think, there she is. And she's our executive director and we'll kind of tag team this one tonight. Um, I see Dan's with us, he's one of our board members. Any other board members wave at me or at us if I've missed you, my apologies. Um, so that's kind of who's keeping the lights on and keeping things working here. As usual, I'll make our ask about donations. So far, we've had 213 people who have registered for the co-housing and coronavirus series of web chats. So we ask you to register once for the whole series. Um, when we do that, we invite you to donate to support the program and 46 of you have. Thank you so very much. Um, it really is because of donations to the association Yay. that we are able to offer programs like this. And in fact, it was because of the previous set of donations prior to this all happening that we had the infrastructure in place to begin to roll them out just as it was coming. Um, and it's because of the donations you're making now that we can keep it going and be ready for whatever is the next thing that is a great place for our community of communities to show up and support each other. Um, so, for special thanks to the five of you who actually donated more than once, noting that with this ongoing and extended period of coronavirus, that's, that's an extended series, um, additional support is very much appreciated. Um, and, and if you aren't yet an Evergreen neighbor that's contributing on a monthly basis, if you could do even $5 a month, that is hugely supportive to us. If we could get everyone in the US to give $5 a month, you know, as much as you might spend on a cup of coffee, if you could go spend money on a cup of coffee, um, that would support the association and we would be on really solid ground to continue offering these programs. So thank you to those who do. And this is an invitation once again to make your monthly donation. We certainly appreciate it. Um, upcoming events. So two soon range online events, um, Rocky Corner, was so excited, they're moving in their new common house and they wanted people to come see it and they organized to host this great event in combination partnership with the association and then coronavirus happened and it is now an online event, which means even if you don't live anywhere near Connecticut, you can go and um, you can register for that. I'm sure Karen's putting the link for that in the chat. Um, that is a week from Saturday, April 25th. Um, and if Saturday isn't enough, you can also participate in the National Open House Day, which has become an online event. We are gonna tonight talk about finances and funnies. Um, and what we're hearing is that financial stress is a really big part of the stress of coronavirus for everyone, including the co-housing crowd. So we wanted to spend some time talking about how that is impacting folks and Lest we get too serious, we thought we would also remember that humor and laughter are healing, they're good for our immune systems, they're good for our mental health. And so we thought we would include in, in sort of interspersed with thoughts about how we can handle financial strain in this time, uh, an opportunity to laugh at some things. I'm gonna start with a couple of videos that have been going around the internet that I thought were particularly funny. Karen, Passing the time without sports, we have curly. <laughs> Very cute. This is another, hold on. That one's gonna keep playing, I guess, if I don't turn it off. What's the, what's the name of that sport again? Curling. Curling, yes. So this is playing with the dog. Level four obstacle, level five. Level six, look at him go. With great faith, you, level seven. You know, that many rolls of toilet paper, <laughs> that's amazing. Uh-oh. <laughs> Game over, I'm out, and there he goes. Smart dog, smart dog. 
Very cute. So that will get us started. I'm going to stop the share. We have other funnies to, to share as we go. Um, but we thought we'd start, we're going to look at some financial things. And we're going to start with Karen's going to share, and hopefully her sound's going to be better than mine, um, with a few things that we've heard of what communities are already doing. So she's going to share just a couple. We'll do some more funnies, and then we'll put you in breakout rooms where you can share with each other ideas, brainstorming, what you're already doing, that kind of thing. So Karen, why don't you tell us what you've heard about? All right, so I think a part, um, there was a couple of reasons that this web chat topic came up. Um, one, and challenges, and um, how to, and, and not necessarily financially specific, but how can we support our community neighbors? And then um, Washington Village shared a story, and that was really what kind of got us started to say, wow, there's some solid, great examples happening out there. We should um, bring this one to everybody's attention and also see what else is happening out there. Okay, I will cover their story. And if somebody from Washington Village joins and wants to uh, pipe in, please do. So the big thing that they're doing is when the community realized that the government would be sending out um, these, theoretically, these $1,200 checks to some adults, many adults, I'm not really sure. We'll see what actually happens. Um, what they what they recognized is that while for some people that was needed, that was really truly needed to be able to make a mortgage, to purchase food, um, really the necessities, but for others, they would be able to cushion this a little, a little bit and it might be some extra cash, whether they were planning on um, kind of setting that aside or or whatever. And so one of the members in their community or members in their community suggested what if we asked community members where that those government checks were going to be quote unquote surplus what if we pulled it all together and perhaps didn't receive that or that wasn't enough and needed something and so their program is called neighbors helping neighbors and uh, what their description is, members rallied to make donations. We recruited volunteers to assist in the disbursement of funds. Since we assumed a fair amount of money would be collected over time, we realized that members with accounting expertise would be necessary to act as a bank. One method of ensuring, ensuring transparency and accountability is to keep our records open for donors to review. We also informed donors that donations would not be tax deductible since they do not have a 501c3 status as a nonprofit. For reasons of privacy, all donors and recipients are anonymous. Um, they limited the need to income loss, such as uh, job loss or business closures as a direct result of COVID-19. Um, all other sorts of financial emergencies are um, negotiable for grants uh, da, 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 and some other details. So um, I think the key thing here, not so much the details I wanted to share because I do not live in Washington Village, but I wanted to share just the general concept. First off, I really want to congratulate them for somebody recognizing that that was a possibility and for the community coming together and really working to create something. I think that's incredible. And um, I think we can, uh, you know, work to do things like that. I do notice in the chat, somebody said some have a different federal government. It's totally true. The point of tonight is to talk about ways that we can help specifically in relation to financial challenges. We've been spending a lot of time in the last few weeks talking about how to emotionally support each other, how to make sure people aren't feeling isolated or feeling like they, um, you know, are able to ask neighbors for help with errands and things, but let's talk tonight about money. So my community, I live 
Stephen Wild Sage co-housing in Boulder, Colorado. I see at least one of my neighbors, I think a couple of neighbors on here tonight. And during our general meeting last week, one of the things that we did was we broke out into small groups uh, on Zoom and uh, talked about what are some ways that we could do something. And some of it is as simple as an idea of putting like a box in the mail room near our cubbies that has um, shelf stable foods and paper products. And if you have extras, put it there. And for somebody who needs something, take it. So that was another idea. And um, I think what the plan is now is we're going to break out and talk about other ideas. True, Karen? Yes. Well, pause, pause there for now. And um, if you would like to just sort of share out, we'd love to hear what financial solutions or ideas or um, totally crazy thoughts, whatever came up in your breakout room. What what have you heard that people are doing? What have you heard that people are thinking about doing? What is there to share from the breakouts? And if I can go first. I'm Vicki in Wasatch Commons. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Vicki. I was with um, Patty and then also um, Lori. There was just the three of us, and I was the only one who's currently living in co-housing. And I um, shared with them that... Um, we just had a discussion about do we need to change our policy around um, uh, late fees. Uh, we already have a policy in place. And so I pointed out to um, Patty and Lori that that's something to consider right off the bat um, um, about your HOA fees and so forth. And then, um, you know, anything that you change for COVID can be temporary. And that's also a good lesson about co-housing is um, when people get antsy about consensus and whether, you know, oh my gosh, and hanging on to something is that you can always change it. And so you just revisit it again. Um, we actually decided to just that our policy was pretty good in place and that um, we would just stick with our current policy of late fees and so forth in the process of asking if you need more help. Thank you. That sounds great. Thanks, Vicki. Great ideas there. What else? Most of you, I can see you on video. Feel free to raise a hand or just unmute. What other ideas were out there? Well, in Elderberry Co-Housing, we grow a lot of our own food and we have a lot of um, sort of horsepower for people to do it yourself. So we thought about the idea that we're, we actually have people who are involved in the local food shelf. Why don't we get some of that food, bring it to our common house, put it in the refrigerator and have a, you know, just anyone who wants, uh, you know, announce that we've got bell peppers, we've got, you know, this kind of lettuce, we've got, you know, um, just having fresh food and even staples that, are available uh, freely to members of the co-housing community. Um, and we also talked a little bit about sort of buddies uh, clustering with uh, others in the community to see how they're doing. And thirdly, you know, economics of driving. If you're gonna go to Walmart and it's a half hour away, tell other people that you're going and that you can either pick up something for them or they can drive, you know, hop in the back seat with you. Um, that would be six feet away, right? The back seat. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the windows open. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Carl. Good ideas. Susan, I think you were, had a hand up with some thoughts. If you'll unmute yourself so we can hear you, please. The finance and legal team uh, had the great idea of initiating um, a completely confidential way of helping people uh, where if somebody in the community lost their job or uh, has uh, reduced hours um, and needs help with the HOA dues uh, that they aren't able to figure out with the company who manages that, um, they could get a six month uh, a loan from the community to be paid back in six months. And the money would be generated by 
there would only be one person who gets the email that somebody needs help. And that's somebody that everybody trusts for confidentiality. And she would generate an email to everybody saying, there's somebody, one of our neighbors needs help. This is how much uh, they're asking for and people contribute money to this go-between person. Um, and I don't know, we haven't received an email that that's been requested yet, but it was just uh, consensed on a couple of weeks ago. That's great. So a totally voluntary and anonymous system, but, um, but an available, a, a, a system whereby people can ask for and offer help. Right. Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks, Susan. Sure. Brian, I see you've unmuted. Did you have something to add to the conversation? Yeah, I can, I can kind of chime in, but um, uh, Harmony and um, God, I've just put your name and I can't find you anymore, but uh, Lori, uh, if I've missed something from our group, um, chime in. Um, you know, one thing that we had been working on before this was uh, HOA dues assistance because we have a community with 40% of our homes that are income and deed restricted, affordable, and four of those are habitat. Um, and one way we're looking at doing that was creating a pool of money that would be used to pay people's dues or assist with um, back dues. Um, and, but the mechanism for giving that out uh, was one that we were a little concerned about. So the plan that we're um, looking into now, we haven't adopted it yet, is to use uh, so the same system that several of our um, therapists or physician friends use to establish sliding scales for their fees, which is a third party uh, reviewer. So it's somebody outside the community who would look at criteria and make a determination. So that would be a leveling the playing field to sort of an effort and get it out of the hands of any interpersonal kind of things in the community. Because I think it's nice that maybe some communities have one person that everyone trusts, but I think one, one really good way to ruin that trust in that one person is to give them the, the drawstrings to a bag of money. Um, so that would be something of caution for me. Um, another thing that we've been doing uh, related to COVID is we've got a spreadsheet online, a Google Sheets spreadsheet where we offer uh, or receive help and um, people have offered financial assistance on that. And we've created a, a good, like you guys said, as well mentioned, a anonymous portal to that too. So um, we haven't had anybody take us up on it, but it's kind of early game on that. And the last thing that I think we're doing that I'm not sure if Karen mentioned before is that um, like one person in particular is a house cleaner and she cleans a bunch of houses in our, in our community. Um, we've all kind of, I think, kept her working even though she can't come into our homes or offices. Um, and uh, so she's getting paid regardless of whether she can do the work or not. Um, so there's some like, little things like that that I think are going on. Is there anything else that you guys want to add, Harmony or um, Lori? Uh, no, I think you covered it. Uh, we're also at Mere Commons uh, covering the uh, salary of our part-time cleaners in the common house. But uh, it never occurred to me, I, I've emailed... Uh, someone who I thought might be short on funds saying, how are you doing? But I never brought it up in the community to see if, if we can help out financially. So I think I'll do something. Cool. All right. That's it from our group, I think. That's so what, what, could, what community were you in? Harmony? Um, Harmony lives in uh, Daybreak in Portland. Uh, Lori lives in Muir Commons, and I live in Wild Sage co-housing. Yep, Wild Sage. Okay, sorry. So I'm to see because we're talking the same thing. They fund, but we don't know how how to make the fund of who would own it and whether it would all be by grant or we would ask for repayment at some time. So, yep, all real questions. Lots yeah. of variables. Yeah, lots of variables to figure things out. Yeah. Anyone else have other ideas to sure. throw into the mix? Sure. Uh, we at the Eco Village here have uh, started uh, mm -hmm. something called Victory Gardens. Uh, wow. And the idea being that what we're going to do is that all the folks now with all the social isolation and all that going mm -hmm. on, some of them have never had gardens before. So there's a lot of people who you know, the kids would like to do something. They're trying to figure out what to do with the kids, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, in effect, uh, we're going to start doing what we call victory gardens. 
and mainly for the, the people in the neighborhoods or the people in, in the town of Charlottesville here. And um, we'll go out and help them start a garden. Uh, probably uh, we've got uh, an organization called Panorama Pay Dirt, which uh, they, do, they do a lot of uh, composting. Uh, they're official composters. So we would actually do raised gar a raised garden. And then uh, we'll sign the people who are starting a garden, we'll assign them a mentor. And they can do all this over the phone and uh, we'll send them along some videos about how to use a broad fork, how to you know, do the various things. And uh, hopefully we'll get th them involved in gardening and they'll be able to uh, provide food for themselves. That sounds great. Okay. Well, I know we have some more funnies to share and I wouldn't wanna cut that short. So <laughs> laughter matters. So, Lori, I think you had some things you had brought that you were offering to share with the group. A while ago, we were getting a little, a little down in the down at, here at Mayor Commons. So I came up with this idea of putting out a daily thing, hidden advantages of the co-housing crisis that you might not have thought of, but I'm sure there are some uh, little gems among the thing. So, and then other people contributed to it. So I'll read you some of these if that's okay. Uh, first good. of all, number one, I started with, I don't have to change my underwear every day. <laughs> <laughs> There's no anxiety about scheduling conflicting events because everything's <laughs> been canceled. That's a, you might not have thought about that. Okay. Uh, oh, not having to buy new clothes as I'll never be going out again. <laughs> now, you may not have realized, but muggers are facing destitution <laughs> as there's no one out on the street to mug. <laughs> now, there is a, there's a group funding muggers. You could send contributions to millionsformuggers.org. <laughs> okay. Now, I have an opportunity to try out dreadlocks as I won't be able to get my hair cut anytime soon. <laughs> I actually, I got desperate about a week ago and I just chopped it all off. Okay. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you too. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Me too. Me too. I'm considering it. I'm pretty fuzzy. <laughs> when I call someone, not worrying about whether they'll be home as they will be. <laughs> Okay, uh, here it says, learning to Zoom. Now I can't get a hold of anyone because they're all busy Zooming. Zooming. <laughs> and then right. I noted uh, there's a huge opportunity to buy stock in Zoom and or Netflix and clean up. Speaking of cleaning up, Clorox stock looking good too. <laughs> okay, I did that. Uh, Maybe it one could, or two more, and then we'll okay, go back to Okay, one or others. two more. It could be worse. You could be in charge of programming for ESPN with no sports <laughs> to show as they're all canceled. <laughs> okay, Sorry, I got to ask, did you, who wrote all these? Who wrote all I, these? I did. I did. I've got a kind of bizarre <laughs> sense of there's humor. A, there's, yeah. a job, there's a job waiting for you. There's a job waiting for you on the on the Stephen Colbert show. <laughs> right, I'll call you. Great. you know, just great. It may be Car Karen and Karen. You know, you could let people submit some too. <laughs> uh, for another time, we also um, I had the idea of starting a haiku challenge, <laughs> and uh, I, I guess there's no but. time now. But we came up with. Do you have time for three? Yeah. I have yep, a question for Karen, Carolyn. Okay, haiku challenge. Actually, yeah. Miraculously, so that has to be four, five syllables, seven syllables, and five syllables. So, miraculously, papers clear, the dining room table reappears. <laughs> That's one. Glad we subscribe to the germ theory of infection, or we'd be toast now. <laughs> What to do today? Read a project, bake a dish, or perhaps nothing. Mm -hmm. Some of them are. <laughs> I like the last one. One more, one more. Uh, bought Chico's cute top. I'll be quite fashionable when liberated. 
Oh, I was just going to say, if you're interested in hearing uh, a little bit that what mm -hmm. we've done to try to keep it fun for the kids, we've got, um, I think, uh, 10 kids here. And um, so we did a um, scavenger hunt here in the complex where we asked people to just put something interesting up in their window, a picture or words or something. And we sent out a list to the kids of what to look for. And then we all texted one another <laughs> to say what time each kid was going out and coming back home so they wouldn't have contact. But we got them to be physically active and they got to wave in everybody's window. So we would text and say, okay, Susie's coming out and everybody would wave and make faces at them. So that was one, one thing that we did for the kids. <laughs> and then for Easter, usually we have an Easter egg hunt, but we couldn't even contemplate how to sanitize, <laughs> you know, candies and eggs and things. And so instead we had the Easter punny and the Easter punny hid tabs with jokes all over the complex, about 150 jokes and puns. And so <laughs> the hunt that the kids had were to find these jokes and then they could come back and tell really terrible, terrible Easter jokes to their <laughs> the, the Easter punny made for a hygienic but very silly Easter. Uh, more of a torture session, but yeah. <laughs> How fun. Karen That's and great. Karen, okay. I, I think we're on the email chain where I said uh, uh, what my son does for a living, which is create puzzle hunts. Um, he also, uh, it, since of course all of his events were canceled, he has turned a lot of those on in, into um, online puzzles. And recently he had a... Um, uh, uh, a trivia contest or a trivia night for his friends and the friends assembled into groups all on Zoom and solved the trivia questions within the groups. Um, oh, wow. And so if that's something that communities would be interested in or if you would be interested in doing this as a, you know, as a, a association-wide event, um, I can hook you up with him. Cool. Yeah, I think I know a lot of people who would enjoy doing that. I think that'd be great. I think it'd yep. be a lot of fun. Yeah. Instead of, it's kind of a cooperative trivia rather than mm -hmm. a competitive trivia. That would be fun. Yeah, <laughs> that, you know, you give him, uh, I mean, it could be just puns. It could be, it could be trivia, sports trivia. It could be any kind of trivia. You name oh, that's it. great. Uh, it, it could be co-housing trivia. Or you'd have to fill him in because he's not in a community, but it, it could be anything. Yeah. Well, thank you. What a great resource. Yeah. So sure. we're going to head towards wrapping up. So what we're going to do is Karen's going to do our usual closing stuff. And as soon as she finishes, I'm going to put up the rest of the funnies I've got in a slideshow. We can oh, all great. just unmute and chuckle together. And I'm just going to let it progress through um, after, after these announcements from our illustrious executive director who's Zoom freaked out in the middle of that. Sorry, I disappeared, but um, I'm back. Um, so I'm gonna plug a few links in the chat in just a moment. Um, the first one is gonna be a link to our web chats page on our Coho US website. We essentially are doing them uh, once a week, sometimes twice a week. Karen, do, uh, do we have confirmation for the next Tuesday's topic and speaker yet? We, we do not. Okay. I'm sorry oh, to say. Yeah, that's okay. Um, a, a part of our intentionality with this was to keep fluid with what was needed at the moment. So um, we're looking at something for Tuesday. Uh, check it out. Just plan on being here because it's going to be good no matter what it is, really. So um, Rocky Corner is uh, was going to be offering our very first live simple series event and um, has evolved to an online only event and it's going to be fantastic. Uh, there's going to be a lot of permaculture information, sharing and caring, caring and sharing. Uh, one of those two is kind of the general theme. It is going to be on Saturday, April 25th. If you're interested in um, attending that online event, but already have plans, it's okay because it's gonna be recorded. And so your registration would be access to the recordings. Either way or a combination would be fine as well. Um, 
donations, as Karen talked about earlier, it would be really fantastic if everybody just committed to uh, being an evergreen neighbor. $5 a month uh, really helps out the association and we can do um, all kinds of cool things like this. And uh, let's see, I thought I had one more thing. Hmm, maybe it was just to say, thanks so much everybody for coming. I'm really happy that you were all here. I hope you got some good information. And um, I'm, I'm gonna start the funny show really quick because I just took this picture the other day. I'm gonna share my screen, are you ready? Hold on. Here's my dog's social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all for being here. Karen, why don't you leave us with some more silliness? All right, here goes. Hey mom, when is the coronavirus thing gonna be over? Just shut up and eat your toilet paper. <laughs> I hope the weather is good tomorrow for my trip to Puerto Backyardia. I'm getting tired of living in, <laughs> in living in low, living roomia. <laughs> <laughs> I've washed my hands so much due to COVID-19 that my exam notes from 1995 resurfaced. <laughs> <laughs> I need to practice social distancing from the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> social distancing baptism. You can see the priest there with that super super poor guy. <laughs> I don't think anyone expected that when we changed the clocks, we'd go from standard time to twilight zone. <laughs> <laughs> There are two types of people in the world. So the first cart has bottled water and toilet paper and paper towels. And the second cart has a case of Corona beer. <laughs> Day one of quarantine. I'm going to take this as an opportunity to improve my health. Day two of quarantine. Due to personal reasons, I am eating a lasagna in the shower. <laughs> Working from home. <laughs> Day six of quarantine, preparing to take out the garbage. So excited, you can't decide what to wear. Very relatable. Day one without casinos, second race, three rolls and a sanitizer. That's a good one. I used to spin the toilet paper like I was on Wheel of Fortune. Now I turn it like I'm cracking a safe. <laughs> Stay together, or you'll end up as toilet paper. <laughs> Box lined up for the dryer. <laughs> Quarantine day five. Went to this restaurant called The Kitchen. You have to gather all the ingredients and make your own meal. I have no clue how this place is still in business. <laughs> Does anyone know how long toilet paper will last if you freeze it? <laughs> I don't know who needs to hear this, but today is Tuesday. <laughs> Every day is Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> when this is all over, we are throwing, this is such a co-housing thing to do too. When this is all over, we are throwing the biggest St. Patrick's Easter de Mayo of July party anyone's ever seen. <laughs> oh, hold on. I can't read because my... Controls are in the way, but don't throw that out. One of us nearly needed to use it last week. <laughs> That's a little more like co-housing than like coronavirus, but I thought it was yeah. funny. In case you've lost track, today is March 97th. Yeah, <laughs> so true. Day seven at home, and the dog is looking at me like, see, this is why I chew the furniture. <laughs> <laughs> I've eaten 14 meals and taken six naps. And it's still today. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Day 20, 20, 21 of quarantine. Ooh, a broccoli and a cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> My house got TP'd last night. It's now appraised at $875,000. Oh, yes. I saw that. This has a very grumpy looking cat. 
<laughs> get a human, they said. Hardly ever home, they said. <laughs> 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 classified ad single man with toilet paper seeks women with hand sanitizer for good clean fun <laughs> tensions are high in the produce section as no one dares to lick their fingers <laughs> they're all trying to get the little produce bags open <laughs> not to brag but I haven't been late for anything in over two weeks first time ever <laughs> right. <laughs> Pro tip for couples suddenly working from home together. Get yourselves an imaginary coworker to blame things on. In our apartment, Cheryl keeps leaving her dirty water cups all over the place, and we really don't know what to do about her. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, conversations will not be canceled. Relationships will not be canceled. Love will not be canceled. Songs will not be canceled. Reading will not be canceled. Self-care will not be canceled. Hope will not be canceled. Mm. May we lean into the good stuff that remains. Mm. Oh, here. Here, here. Nah. Good night, everybody. <laughs> good night. Goodbye. See you next night. week. Thank you. <laughs> Bye -bye. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.